Welcome to Tal Flader Mouse. This is your host, Jeff. Around six months ago, we posted a video experimenting with 123 lithium batteries. The 123 batteries proved to be a pretty effective and brutal improvised projectile. Using a Sabo system and a fully rifled shotgun, we're able to achieve really good stability with these projectiles. The impacts of these 123 batteries were just ferocious. And if you want to see that video, I have a link in the description. The 123 test was a complete success. The viewers agreed, but they wanted to see something bigger and better and I must have gotten hundreds of comments wanting us to try the 18650 battery. And to be honest, people have wanted to see the 18650 for years. And what exactly is an 18650 battery? It's one of these, you may have recognized it. It's 18 millimeters in diameter by 65 millimeters in length. And it's twice as long and twice as heavy as our 123 battery. The 18650 battery is used in everything from little flashlights, cameras, rechargeable uh, drills, tools, and yard equipment, those hipster e-bikes, and the Tesla uses something like 17,000 18650s in it, which just seems kind of ridiculous to me. The 123 battery is a sub-caliber projectile which required us to use a Sabo to get the proper fit, but the 18650 is a full-bore projectile. We don't need a Sabo for this. And I sincerely recommend you do not try this yourself just from our own experience. Now in our test, we'll be using some batteries that are just completely dead. But for the sake of curiosity and science, we'll also test a couple that are fully charged or mostly charged. Each battery was carefully measured to make sure we didn't have any issues with the fit in the barrel. Enough with the boring but important details. Let's get out to the test range and see how these things fly. Welcome back to Outflater, folks. Jeff is behind the camera and Officer Greg out here wearing Brandon's glasses today for some damn reason. I can barely see through these things. It's nerf or nothing. Nerf or nothing. This is like looking through okay. a piece of toilet tissue or something. <laughs> hey, so you guys probably remember if you've been with the show for a long time, Jeff got his start on in uh, YouTube back in the 1850s uh, putting out videos where he cobbled together a lot of stuff into a 12 gauge shell. One of the most requested items, one of the most suggested items from viewers is put a battery in it. Double A's, triple A's, one, two, threes. We, we've got all the suggestions out there. D size, like how are you gonna fit that down the bore? But Jeff has gone and cobbled together some of these, well, these are handmade shells uh, with an 18650 battery, rechargeable batteries in them. And the interesting part about today is some of these are dead and depleted. Some of the ones we have are fully charged you can see right there, it's got the mark on it for fully charged. Just so we wouldn't mix it up, you know? Oh, I, I tried to lay, mark it so it's we wouldn't tech. accidentally shoot them. When we... It's very high tech. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do things. So anyway, we're gonna shoot them today out of Jeff's Benelli. This is a smooth bore shotgun, but with a rifled choke. So it gives a little bit of spin on the way out. And then we're gonna drop on a rifled barrel. And rifling makes everything better. So just because it has a rifled barrel, a fully rifled barrel does not make it a rifle. But this one has a sniper scope and a sniper laser. It's a, it's a Chinese. Uh, <laughs> so we know this one's going to be super. It's like a $100 scope. Oh, yeah. That's, that's high tech right there. I don't know if it's sighted in or not, so we'll find out. But my issue is I expect are, these things to be very horrible flying projectiles. Yeah, experience says, and science both say that these things are going to wobble all around and, and spin on the way well, down. You never the target, know. But so. I've been wrong before. I'm wrong like 90% of the time, so never mind. So all we're doing essentially is casting a big giant cylinder downrange, right? Yeah, Got giant. No uh, aerodynamic qualities whatsoever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll start like out. Of, How far away are we from the target? Maybe... We're about 15 yards away from the target today. Uh, if we can hit that, I'll be surprised. Yeah. I'm going to aim for the little middle uh, shape down there first, and let's see where they hit, see what they do. We'll all be surprised together. And knowing is half the battle. That's right. Boop, doop, doop, doop. <laughs> okay, steel armor plate. Armor plate. I'm going to aim for right in the center on that orange triangle. Gotcha. I'm ready. Here we go. Wow. Oh, crap. 
really get out of thumb. These things are like one and a quarter ounces, by the way. Yeah. Wow. Oh, crap. As we say, the high speed camera does not lie. We had relatively good accuracy. It shot a little bit low, but the stability was just not there. The, the battery hit the plate sideways. Not surprised. Okay, you hit the plate. That's <laughs> hit the plate. Great, great, great. Okay. Um, <laughs> are you breathing in cancer there? Yeah. Hit a little low. Jeff tells me in the high speed camera that they were tumbling, right? Yeah. So. But at close range, that would mess you up. Oh, yeah. And then look down here on the table. There's a line. This was actually sitting right here. There's a line it's probably metal. Be careful because there's probably metal fragments in there that'll cut the crap out of you, too. Oh, yeah. I'm going to taste it and see. <laughs> it tastes like mercury and poisonous stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, we hit steel, so I guess at 15 yards, they're good to go for home Kind defense. of. <laughs> Home defense. Perfect for home defense. Yeah. We brought the internet out here with us, Jeff, to shoot a hole in it. This is a Tandy 8000. You can pick one of these up at your nearest Radio Shack <laughs> for about uh, $3,700. <laughs> hey, kid, that's how much computers cost. Okay, whenever you're ready. Here we go on the Tandy. Oh, it might have keeled. Again, relatively good accuracy for what these things are, but terrible stability. The rifle choke tube does not give it enough spin, apparently, to stabilize it. Man, they don't build computers like they, they used to. <laughs> no, they don't. Thank God. <laughs> no kidding. So we hit a little low and left of the Tandy 8000, and if you'll let me to open up this web portal here, <laughs> you'll see that the interior box the flux capacitor box took a big hit, and then we spin this oh, around. Oh, okay. And we open up another window. I just bend it. <laughs> it cut through all this ribbon. Wow. I know there were so many ribbons in the computer, and uh, tried to make it through, but busted it open. That's about it. Maybe we ought to try full rifling. It knocked all your search history. Right <laughs> Thank goodness, though. If I had Nord VIP, uh, you know, we wouldn't right. have to worry about that. Here we brought with us a piece of the Berlin Wall, actual piece of the wall. Now in Berlin, it's, it's just joke. called the Wall. Huh? I said in Berlin, it's just called the Wall. Or oh, Bond. okay. Bond. I just dialed He's out doping the it in there. He's doping it. I dialed out the picture. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Oh, I got the laser going and everything. Yeah, we got a laser that's just nowhere lined up with the crosshair. <laughs> I know, All you right. can't adjust it. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Whoa! Well, it hit it somehow. That was impressive. <laughs> Whoa! Now using full rifling, we had much better spin and much better stability. Shot a little bit low, but we'll blame the scope setting on that but the results were just absolutely impressive. Just a lot of energy busting through that concrete barrier. Okay, how will it do against Kevlar, against our ballistic dummy? I bet the balloon stops at first. <laughs> if you can hit it. There we go, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Jeez. Got some what in a quarter ounces of uh, brutal power? Ready. Gee! <coughs> Although we had good spin on this shot, the stability was just not there. It, it was not flying straight through there. And that's the goal here, is to not just shoot goofy things like this, but to also achieve stability. And we failed on this shot. And often it's, it's hard to determine why it works one time and not the other, but the cars were just not in our favor on this shot. Good thing he was a Yankee. There's too many of them anyway. Are you finished doping in that scope? Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> manually pulling the laser with my hands <laughs> to get it to match the crosshairs. Okay, I, I don't know if you're gonna hit it, but good know. luck. Let's give it a try. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> it went through something. It hit his fluff. 
Yeah, I saw a flip come out. <laughs> now on this one, the battery was wrapped with a little bit of aluminum tape to bulk it up to try to engage the rifling better and it worked perfectly this time. Although it was a brutal neck shot, he was actually aiming way up here. The scope is not adjusted properly for this projectile. Let's see if we can fix that on our next shot using a fully charged battery this time. So now we have a charged battery, Jeff? You charged it's more or less charged. It's 3.5 volts, I think. 18,650 volts in it. <laughs> and we're gonna send it down range. See if we can, we're gonna aim at the aluminum plate. If we can hit the aluminum plate with this lovely sniper scope, uh, we're gonna see if we get any kind of a flash or any kind of a discharge because this is a charged battery. That was the mistake we made last time. I'm so cheap that I didn't bring any fresh one, fresh batteries out last time. And oh, there's like half the batteries? comments that were, how come we didn't use a charged one? Because these are dead. Why wouldn't you use dead ones? Charged batteries are good for other things. Yeah. Let's see if it's hot. I'm very frugal, by the way. <laughs> I didn't notice. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. In the battery hole. Wow. Whoa. Fully charged. What was that? Wow. Now Greg adjusted his point of aim way above where he wanted it to impact and nailed it. That is as perfect as you can get, especially with this unusual projectile. I'll be the first to admit that I was very surprised to achieve not only stability but also accuracy with the 18650 battery. That's the problem, we should have used fully charged batteries the whole time. The whole time. That's, they're far more accurate, clearly. Yeah. And you can get, uh, I don't know, your toys to run on them. So I was holding the crosshairs way up here. This, that's the offset of this sniper. Finally scope. learning where that thing shoots. Right. It's a good uh, four, three or four inches north. Anyway, uh, evidently we put it in the circle. We saw this go flying off to the side. Look at that thing. And both of us are catching some oh, the, toxic fumes. Oh, I was choking on it. Both of us this passed is bad, out. This is a really bad idea, Greg. I know which is most of what we do. Uh, both of us passed out. When we woke up, our shoes were off and I was speaking German. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with the chemicals inside of these things, but they are vacky. Yep. All right, let's try some- uh, We have one more? Splashy. We got one more charged round and one uncharged round. Okay. Well, let's shoot a big jug of water because that was mistake number two was that we didn't shoot something with water in it. Okay. With our one, two, three battery video, okay, you want because charge. apparently to the viewers, lithium creates a big fire when it hits water. Holy lord! Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do a charged round against a jug of water. Yep. Yeah. So we broke the Benelli. We uh, can't get the last shell that we fired ejected. Somehow the bolt has seized up inside of there, and then I think when we were banging around on it, we might have cracked it. Front row. So we're uh, we're moving from the expensive Italian shotgun down to the dirt cheap Turkish shotgun. <laughs> a little works, Tony. It works every single time, 50% of the time. Little Tony, and uh, great for breech loading things. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's see if the lithium will react with the water. I'm ready. Here we go. Whoa. Okay. Uh, for some reason, that one flew straight as an arrow. No Tony. spin, no spin. Because of little Tony. Yeah. No spin zone, and uh, I don't see any fire. No, there's no fire, but the water we're pouring out of here has rainbows in it. It's like uh, Palestine, Ohio water. Oh, East Palestine. Oh, not the West Palestine? Yeah. Went straight, it hit a little bit low. That could have been my pull, I don't know. No, well, I, I, with these things, it's anyone's that. guess. There's a little bulge on the back here where it tried to, Ooh, it tried to, no bang, tried to bang it in the rear. That's right. Everything must have been absolutely perfect for this projectile to fly straight through the air without any spin. Now even though this battery is fully charged and we impacted water, the uh, projectile broke apart, well we didn't get any fire and flame like we would expect. Okay, let's see if we have the same luck this time. All right, little Tony. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Here we go, on the big jug. Wow. Oh, we got some splash. That's pretty impressive. A lot of energy there. 
and positive ejection. Nice. Now this is exactly what you would expect to see a projectile like this coming out of a smoothbore without any spin stabilization. Terrible stability, kind of nosedive down a little bit. So no surprise here. Tremendous energy dump. Battery versus water, kaboom. Um, interesting to note that that little Tony shot both of those rounds low. One of them 100% flew true and the other one I guess. It was, it was tumbling a little bit. But look what it did to the table. Yeah, venture table. What are you gonna do? Lift with... it up there. Yeah, look at that. Mrs. Flater Mouse is gonna be pissed at Easter when she invites all the family. I know. <laughs> Yard sale table. <laughs> but the good thing is you could put a watermelon on there and not have it roll off the table now. <laughs> always, That's it. That's all of them. Always find the bright side. That is all of them. So yeah, goofy idea, but everybody always suggests it, so we shot it. Yeah. It, it, they, luckily the right size the right weight right everything you know but kind of i had to, there were some surprises in there though there were surprises there's always surprises out here yeah shooting in the middle of nowhere yep so uh yeah there you go you guys always want to see batteries there's some batteries some of them charged some of them not charged what was the the 18650s they wanted to see for years and yeah. there you go it's no no none of those sucker double a's <laughs> Well, those are the wrong bore size for a 12. Yeah, but they can be loaded into anything. Right. Silly putty or whatever. Anyway, we appreciate you guys stopping by and checking it out. Always fun to test these And things. remember, you being the viewer, with your suggestions, you're part of the channel too. Okay. Keep them coming in. Okay, so you're part of the channel. Get to editing because... You uh, wanted to see it. That's right. You asked for it. However it's going. Hey, since, you're, since you guys are part of the channel, uh, Jeff and I are going to go have a coldie. Why don't you guys clean up all this crap? And we'll yeah, see we got to bring in hazmat. Where'd it come out at? Just blast it out the bottom. Oh, okay. All right. Belated. Now we gotta gotta find all them. Belated outro. Yeah. Yep. Well, all the viewers are part of the channel. They're gonna find it all for us. Oh, okay. All right. See you on the next one.